Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying your December. In this week's video, we're going to do it a little bit different because I'm going to tell you about one of the outings, actually two outings, I had when I was in Cornwall with Nigel and James. The idea about this little talk is why even bother? Why actually getting out? And I'm going to give you two examples of this. So we stayed in St. Ives in Cornwall and especially Nigel and James really wanted to go and do a lot of like street photography and photo photography around St. Ives. And I gotta admit, I wasn't super excited about that. It was not the part of the trip I was looking most forward to because I wanted to get out and photograph all the epic seascapes that you have in Cornwall or something else in nature, old stuff. So one morning we uh, headed down to the beach. Nigel wanted to do a little bit of filming and James, he waited a little bit until after sunrise. He didn't really care so much for the golden hour stuff. And I was just like so, so uninspired. So we headed down to the beach and Nigel wanted to film a little bit and I was just like walking around. There were some patterns in the sand that looked pretty good. And at the time I thought that these patterns could actually work as a decent focal point or some kind of subject or something interesting in the photo. That is always what I look for when I go out and photograph. And especially on days when I'm less inspired, I go more into like the technical way of thinking about it. So I need my subject, I need a foreground, try to create depth, all the things I always talk about in my ebooks on composition. Down here at this beach, these patterns were nice, but I knew I needed to have a specific angle to these patterns if I wanted to photograph them. So I couldn't go all the way down close. There was a woman walking through the scene at one point, so I tried to also walk out into the scene myself and get some photos, but the light just wasn't optimal and the scene was a little bit annoying and there wasn't really anything that worked for me. So instead of like hanging around too much, I started walking up towards the little church that was there. However, on the way there were some seagulls flying above and just, <laughs> I guess, with, with the lack of inspiration, I just put my camera up towards them and just hammered uh, off a few photos. And I actually think that for, from a minimalist perspective, this photo actually turned out pretty well. It's not something I usually do, but for the photo in and of itself, I can definitely see it in a, in a frame on a wall if you're into that kind of photography. <laughs> so I headed up to this little church and Nigel walked into town, so I was on my own here. And it just started raining and it was so windy and it was just a little bit annoying, everything. But it is on these days where there's a good chance of some good light coming out. And that was exactly what happened when I was up at the church. The only problem was I didn't really have that strong of a focal point. God Revy Lighthouse was really, really far away. So I had to put on the long lens and zoom into that. And I tried a few photos towards that direction, but honestly, I don't really think that it, they work that well. I also photographed a little bit in towards the town, but again, it was just like meh. And <laughs> with all the wind and, and the rain coming in again, I was just starting to freeze and it was just a little bit annoying, but I knew that there must be something here. So instead of standing around up by the church, I decided to walk a little bit further down towards the ocean because it looked a little bit more interesting. There were some cliffs down there that I could probably use for something. So on the way, there was another shower that hit me, which was, ugh, again, it, it didn't help on the mood. But I managed to finally get down towards the coastline. And it was just like, it was so slippery walking down there. And sometimes I ask myself what it is I'm trying to do for a photo. But after a little bit of acrobatics, I actually did manage to go down because there was actually a cliff down there that I could see that may actually work to break the horizon. Also a thing I talk about in my ebooks, if everything fails along the coast, try to find a cliff, try to find some kind of subject, something that the eye can linger on, your focal point, your subject that also like breaks the horizon. So you don't have the horizon to like divide the photo up into everything in the foreground and everything in the sky. So for the most part, you want to have something that binds the foreground to the background and not have like one line that goes through your photo and divides up the photo. So anyway, I tried out with both filters on, tried some really, really long exposures. And honestly, I don't really think the really long exposures turned out that well because the sea just became like very, very still, very like misty. And then tried some 
a little bit faster shutter speeds, but you still get those streaks. And I think that to a certain degree, I guess they worked out. The only problem is that at this point, there was almost no colors left in the sky. It was just like daylight and the foreground was in shadow and the light just wasn't very interesting. I could imagine that during a summer sunset, this location could work really well. But at this time of year, during these conditions, it was sadly not particularly interesting. So I do think that the composition works, and I also think that the shutter speed works. It's just the weather that was a bit meh. So I stood around in this location for probably about an hour, trying a lot of different things, but it just didn't get any better. So I just packed up and headed back into town. I was actually in the town that I found a little bit more interesting photographs. So I came by this really cool little street, there was like a lot of these drains, rain drains that came down and they were exposed on the outside of the walls, which looked really cool. So I started photographing those and I came away with this photo, which I think works really well. So I also got a photo of the street looking down the street and with some power lines on top. And at this point, the sun actually came out and actually gave a little bit of color to the scene. So. All in all, I also think that this photo works pretty well, even though they are both photos of subjects or a, a, a town, which is something I usually don't do, but I, I do see the compositions, like I do see the subject. I just usually am not a whole lot into those kind of photos. At this point, I was really tired and I actually just wanted to head back and be like, okay, whatever this was good. So the entire point of this outing was to just give it a chance, give it a go, like maybe something happened. And obviously I remember this outing. I'm not really sure I got so many experiences that I can use moving forward because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I remember it. So in that way, I guess it was good getting outside, like I wouldn't remember if I was just sitting back home in the couch. A few days later, we went to another little town called Port Reith, and here I'd actually done a little bit of research beforehand, so I knew that there was actually something to photograph. Now I still wanted to stay in the town and photographing this pier with this little hot out on it. And I think also James just walked around there to take some photographs. And the good thing about this place was that we had high seas, so we had some big waves coming in. And when these waves crash upon this little pier, they just like explode. So I tried to walk around a little bit on the beach, trying to find a optimal composition, but that was also like really hard. Basically you just shoot towards it and that's it. You can use it as a leading line, but in our case here, we didn't have any sun on the foreground. So I either had to wait for the sun to come out or I had to try to find a place where when the waves crashed, I had a darker background. I had some cliffs in the background that I tried to incorporate. So what I did was that I walked down to the beach and walked left. So I had these rocks in the background. However, suddenly the sun came out. So now I could actually walk back and use the sky as the background because the foreground was lit up and here I got a really cool wave photo that it looks really aesthetic as you can see right here. And for once I actually converted it into black and white, which I think really benefits the photo. So you can see it in both in color here and in black and white. And I'm curious to hear which one of the photos you like the best. So when I got this photo, I was fairly confident that this was it for this scene. Like I didn't want to spend too much more time here as there were other places I wanted to photograph. So I went up through the town, photographed a few waves on the way, but else just headed up onto a ridge. So I headed up onto the top of this ridge and walked along the trail that was up there. And I came down to this place with some really, really cool sea stacks where I fairly fast found a composition with the trail leading into the scene, and then a couple of sea stacks and I had this water spray that was like spraying up because of the strong winds we had that day. From time to time, the sun came out and it just looked so, so good. I didn't bother too much with trying different shutter speeds. I just wanted a fast shutter speed 
and I also bracketed my photos as to get the entire dynamic range. It wasn't a big issue to get the entire exposure here, even though I was photographing into the sun when the sun came out. I just needed two exposures, one that was a little bit underexposed and one normal exposure. And I've just put those together in Photoshop. And as you can see here, they turned out really, really well with that sea spray coming up and the light coming out. And super interesting scene, very beautiful scene. I, of course, also photographed a whole lot of other stuff this day, pointing my camera towards the sunbeams towards God Ravi Lighthouse that we were photographing now from the other side than from St. Ives. And I was of course also photographing seagulls and rain and whatever else was there. But in the end, I actually think that these photos here were the ones that came out the best from this day. And that's just the thing. I find that this outing was much more successful because I had planned a little bit more. I had researched a little bit more. I got some beneficial weather, I wore in landscapes that I found interesting, and then I could of course compose the photo in a way that was beneficial for the scene. So all in all, this outing was much more successful than the one I had in St. Ives, because in St. Ives I was just like walking around and just hoping for the best. Yeah, I had done a little bit of preparation from back home. So this video was also inspired because I sometimes get questions when I do presentations, Zoom presentation for camera clubs or photogra photography, photography societies. And some of the questions are, Mass, you always get these amazing photos. Do you ever fail? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I often fail. I often go out and don't come away with something cool. But obviously, when I make videos and... I consider myself first and foremost a landscape photographer. I want to show you the work I'm happy about. I don't want to show you the work I'm not happy about. Obviously, you see the whole, you usually see the whole range of photos I get on photography outings, but I usually also take so many photos when I'm out in the field that showing you all the photos doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I want to show you the work that I'm proud of, the work that I want to show, obviously. But with a video like this, hopefully you get an understanding that I, like anyone else, aren't getting epic photos, no matter the conditions and no matter where I am. But for the most part, if you are in a place where you're uninspired, think composition and try to find something that interests you a little bit. So the two town photos I got in St. Ives, I kind of like those even though I would probably not put them in my portfolio. And then again at Port Reith, I really like the sea stack photos and I like the pier photo of the breaking wave. So I hope you somehow benefited from this video and the insights I gave you here. If you want to learn more about composition, be sure to get my two eBooks. There are links down in the description. If you want to learn how I edit my photos, everything from the epic landscapes to the monochromatic landscapes, be sure to enroll in my big Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. There's also a coupon code down in the description. And uh, I hope you are enjoying your December and see you next time.